Hello, I, I'm uh, Dr. Baron Lawner. I'm the Chief of Minimally Invasive Scoliosis Surgery at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York, and I'm a professor of orthopedic surgery. Uh, I've been practicing uh, and specializing in the field of scoliosis and uh, adolescent uh, spinal uh, deformities for the past 25 years. So Schreierman kyphosis is a rounding of the back. It's a structural rounding of the back that appears usually in an adolescent child for the first time, and it results in a stiff, rounded curvature of the spine and can be associated with the back pain. So often, Schoerman kyphosis falls through the cracks, really. The front line of uh, sort of uh, picking this uh, condition up falls to the families and it falls to the pediatricians. And pediatricians have been really uh, made aware of the importance of looking for scoliosis, but Schoerman's kyphosis is much less common. So often these patients fall through the cracks and the parents say, well, I've been telling my Son, son or daughter to sit upright or stand upright, and they just are lazy, etc. until they realize that they're having a difficult time in straightening out. So the pediatrician may not pick this up as, as early as uh, other conditions such as scoliosis. So um, once the sort of rounding is picked up and noted and it's, it's been a problem for a while, then the patient is referred for an x-ray and usually comes to a specialist office where we can do an x-ray and it's really picked up on the x-ray. It's really diagnosed based on the findings of an x-ray which may show that the vertebra or the building blocks of the spine which are shown here in this model, they're instead of being rectangular, they're, they're kind of wedge shaped and as a result of the wedging of multiple vertebra or bones of the spine, multiple vertebra are wedge shaped and as a result they sort of collapse into this round, round back um, condition. There are also abnormalities of the discs, which are the shock absorbers between each vertebra, and they become irregular and compressed, and there may be pain associated with it. So the diagnosis is uh, made clinically first, but then it's confirmed on an x-ray, and it's really the x-ray findings that confirm the diagnosis of Schoerman's kyphosis. In terms of treatment, uh, it depends on how severe the curve is and how much growth the child has. So for milder curves, milder kyphosis, uh, up to 50 degrees or so, or 55 degrees, we'll send the patient for physical therapy and give them a, a home exercise program in which we strengthen the muscles of the back in order to have them work on their posture and alignment. And if the, the curve is not that large and uh, uh, there's not a lot of uh, rigidity, stiffness to the curve, they may do very well with that approach, particularly if they're not growing as well. Some, uh, many patients present, however, with larger curves of more than 55 degrees up to about 70 or 75 degrees. And if they're still going, the first line of treatment is a brace. The goal of the brace is to prevent worsening, but also to actually uh, lead to some improvement and correction of the kyphosis. So we do see that uh, bracing in this population and those with kyphosis often results in at least partial correction of the round back. We don't see that as frequently in scoliosis, but we do, uh, I would say, often find that in the kyphosis patient. And it depends on how big the curve is, how long the, the child's wearing the brace, whether they're compliant with the brace, and sticking to it and how well the brace is made. So all those factors are important. And then finally, for uh, kyphosis that's more than 70 or 75 degrees, if it's getting worse, if it's painful, if it's just associated with an unacceptable deformity, um, and uh, in those cases, we offer surgery, uh, surgical correction of the kyphosis. Uh, sometimes we treat s surgically smaller curves. Why do we do that? That seems aggressive. Well, we found through our research that when the kyphosis, the angle, where the apex is, where the, the spine kind of curves and sticks out in the back, uh, if that's a low apex towards the lower back, those patients have more pain than when the apex or the sticking out part is 
higher in the spine, which is where it normally should be. So if it's a low apex, even curvatures as low as 35 degrees sometimes are treated surgically. So it's very individual, but for the most part, larger curves are treated surgically. Intermediate, sort of mid-sized curves, they're treated with a brace, and smaller curves are treated with exercise and physical therapy. And it really depends on how the patient presents. Pain, body image, self-image is, is bothered by the kyphosis and uh, or progression, worsening of the kyphosis. Surgery is very effective. We've done, we've done a lot of research in our research group at the Setting Scoliosis Trade Foundation uh, on Charman's kyphosis. We've learned a lot from the research and, and how our patients are doing and what the outcomes are, and that includes the amount of correction we get. And so what we've found is that we really not only correct the kyphosis, but we have a three-dimensional realignment of the spine. Some of the patients have scoliosis, some of them have a rotation of the spine. They all have rounding that's sort of in the one plane front to back. And uh, that front to back rounding is very well corrected. And not only that, we take an apex, that part that sticks out. If it's low, we bring it up. So it's really a more normal, a more normal contour of the spine is, is created or recreated, I should say, and their kyphosis is corrected. So the patients are taller, uh, they have a more normal contour of their back, their pain gets better, and they are happier with their, their uh, appearance. And I think that also reflects in their mental health, because we've looked at the uh, health outcomes in patients with Schwarman's kyphosis, and they have very low uh, body image in some cases, they have a sense of uh, maybe a kind of a depressed affect. To some extent, they have pain. And uh, <clears throat> those parameters, those uh, areas of their life improve dramatically, much more so than for uh, adolescent scoliosis. Uh, everybody's a little different, but there are commonalities to patients. So uh, the initial recovery is three or four days in the hospital. And we tell the patients, we tell you, your, your family members, no BLT, no bending, lifting, twisting for uh, up to three months. So by two to three months, we may let the child have a little bit more activity and child, young adult. Um, and we'll generally, after three or four weeks, once the incision is, is nicely healed, we'll let the patient get into the swimming pool, walk, and maybe even do some kickboard in the pool. By two to three months, we'll then initiate a course of physical therapy to strengthen the core and to work on flexibility and then really resume, uh, gradually resume full activities. So about three months total. And, it, and probably out to six months we'll see complete uh, return to full activities. So a lot of people ask, after the spine is fused, uh, doctor, do I, do I have to have the rods removed? Do I need a second operation? And the answer is no. We prefer to keep the rods in place. Actually, uh, there are, has been quite a bit of research and experience from uh, myself and colleagues around the world that shows when you remove the rods, there can be some loss of correction. So the rods kind of act like reinforced concrete. The concrete is the spinal fusion, the welding of the bones together and the rods serve as that reinforcement as they do uh, have the, the uh, iron bars that reinforce concrete. So we leave the rods in. So it's very uncommon for uh, rods uh, to break in general in adolescent and young uh, people who have uh, spinal uh, surgery. Uh, for kyphosis or scoliosis, very uncommon, much more common in the adult, and especially middle age and older adults, um, because they tend to heal very well and fuse their spines very well. And so we use techniques based on experience, based on our research, that reinforces the fixation, the hold on the spine, so that screws are not likely to pull back and rods are not likely to break. <laughs>